All right. Let's continue with coefficients of friction. Okay, 10.10. .10. So we saw in the previous video, we ended off with this. We saw that the maximum force of static friction, right, is proportional to the force with which the object presses on the surface. Okay, so there's an object there. This there's a, if a friction force, the maximum friction force would be proportional to this, um, this force that is being applied onto the surface, okay, which is, in this case, is the normal force, okay. So here we go. This is uh, an equation that says that the maximum static force, okay, this is the maximum static friction force, is proportional mu s is the proportional proportionality constant it's proportional to the normal force between those two surfaces okay so let's have a look at a, a little example well it's an example that really shows us how to actually calculate this mu s so mu s is your static coefficient of friction and you also get mu k, which is your kinetic coefficient of friction. We'll get to this uh, a bit later. But how do we, first of all, your, mu, your static coefficient of friction is a property between two surfaces, wood and glass, wood and wood, um, ice and metal, right? It's two surfaces and it's a property between those two surfaces, okay? But now, how do we practically determine this, um, this coefficient of static friction? Well, one way is for us to put an, an object, right? Say now we want to know the coefficient of static friction between wood and metal. Say now this is a wooden block and this is a metal surface, a specific metal. And we want to measure what is the mu s what is the mu s betwe uh, between these two surfaces so what we do is we put it on an inclined surface and we keep increasing this angle right right before it starts to slip okay so we keep increasing and increasing and increasing and the, the split 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 second we see this guy start to move we measure this angle okay we, we, we take that angle. And we know that right before it moves, um, the sum of the forces in the x and y is equal to zero. All the forces in the x direction and all the forces in the y direction are equal to zero. So here is a free body diagram. Remember we've got Fg down. Okay. And we've also got, let's change color here. What can we make it? What do you want? Let's change it to blue. We've got a, a gravitational force down. We've got the contact force up. Okay. And, and if we want to break this up into its two components, we're going to get FSB. So that's your, your this becomes your, the, this, this guy's component along there is your friction force. And then this guy also has a normal component, which is your normal force. So that guy's broken up in it, into its two components, and your gravitational force is also broken up into its y component and its x component. And so, if we look at the sum of the forces in the x direction, we're looking at these two, we know that F S B max is acting in that direction, and the X component of gravity is in that direction. So these two forces sum up to zero. So we know that FSB max is equal to minus the X component of gravity. Okay, so why, why are we trying to do this? Because we know that the gravitational maximum, sorry, the maximum friction force, which is the maximum that this force can be, is proportional to the normal force. Alright? 
So now we know what this maximum friction force equals. It equals the negative of the x component of the gravitational force. Okay, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Now what happens if we add up the vertical, the y component forces? Again, the sum of the forces in the y equals zero. So we have this F, this normal force, plus this force equal to zero. So this normal force is equal to the negative um, y component of the gravitational force. And we know that this is that normal force. So if we take these two solutions, this and that, and we plug it into here, we're going to get we're going to get this, and we say that the, we find that the this coefficient mu s is equal to the x component of gravity divided by the y component of the gravity force. The x component divided by the y component. That's what your coefficient of static friction equals. Now, where else have we seen this? Where else have we seen this? We know that um, tan theta, tan of this angle, is equal to your FEBX divided by FEBY. Okay? And we know that this, we just saw, this is mu s. So mu s is then equal to tan theta. Mu s is equal to tan theta. So, okay, what are we trying to say? Trying to say that if we raise this guy up until it, just before it starts moving, we know that our coefficient of static friction is equal to the tan of this angle. Okay? It's equal to the tan of that angle. Now, one very, very important point to make here is that this is only valid. This relationship is only valid right before it starts to move. Okay? So that is an important thing. So, okay. So that's what we need to take away from here. See you in the next one.